I V M. There's a quick survey to fill out on ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It lets us know a little bit more about who's listening to us. And you know what? We're going to do a few prizes. So, I mean, like, we'll do a random drawing of, like, maybe 10 people, and we'll send you all some swag. Remember, that's ivmpodcast.com slash survey, where you can fill out the survey. a brand new episode of the Musafir Stories, India's very own travel podcast, where each week we share the journey of travelers in their own words and relive their experiences with you, our listeners. Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of the Musafir Stories. Hope you're all well and keeping safe. On the podcast today, we have returning guests Ranjani and Raghavan, the travel couple from Rara Rasta a fun travel blog and platform where they share stories from their travels. Ranjani is a content and research specialist and Raghavan is an investment analyst, both currently being based in Mumbai. On today's episode, they take us to a quaint little town in Rajasthan and share their memories from a recent road trip. So let's buckle up and hop on to the episode to find out more. So with that introduction, we'd love to welcome back the travel couple, Ranjani and Raghavan from Rara Rasta. Hey guys, welcome back to the Musafir, Musafir Stories. Stories. Hello. Hello, hi. Hi, Saif. Hi, Faiza. And so nice to actually see Faiza today because we missed you last time. Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I keep <laughs> listening to the episode and I keep telling Saif that, oh my God, I wish I was there. But thank you guys for coming, like, you know, coming on Musafir Stories again. Thank you so much that I can be a part of the journey this time. Thank you. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. And for uh, those of the listeners who are wondering, and if you haven't checked it out already, please go uh, listen to um, Raghav and uh, Ranjani's previous episode they did with us on uh, Trankabar or uh, Tarangambadi. Yeah, you said that right. <laughs> Raghav. <laughs> <laughs> I got that right. Yeah, yeah. It's so a wonderful episode there uh, covering uh, this quaint little um, fort town of Tarangambadi. Uh, do check it out. But today we have a very uh, different place, uh, although some some things might be overlapping. So without much ado, why don't you give you, uh, why don't you guys give us a little bit of a background about where you're taking us to today? Okay, so this is uh, definitely separated by quite a lot of distance uh, geographically. Uh, and we are going to take you up north, uh, closer uh, to our neighboring country. Last time it was closer closer to the other neighboring country of Sri Lanka. This time we are closer to Pakistan. <laughs> uh, so we are taking you to a small place called Bundi. Uh, so yeah, it has nothing to do with the, the Bundi Raita or anything like that. <laughs> uh, so that's what a person from South India will probably think. But yeah, yeah, so yeah Bo- you read my mind. <laughs> yeah, so Bundi is uh, the the town that we're taking you to, and uh, if I have to describe this place, I mean, assume you're just uh, you know traveling uh, by road uh, on your vehicle uh, on on this highway, and you're probably moving uh, further up uh, north, and uh, suddenly there is this incline, and uh, you know you see a, a valley uh, sort of a thing on your left hand side. Uh, of the road but then suddenly when you when you are speeding across you come across this mountain and what you would obviously see in a mountain is a lot of brown lot of rocks uh, mm-hmm. but then you, you see something that you probably would have seen only in uh, you know the harry potter uh, you know movies uh, i am i am no potter head uh, because that that wouldn't be right because i've just started seeing uh, in the last uh, you know uh, 3 4 years i i have not read the books i'm more of a mm-hmm. movie buff so i i just immediately pictureized that i was in hogwarts and you know this oh, wow. whole fort sort of a thing yeah absolutely I, I i i generally you know tend to exaggerate for effect but here i'm not exaggerating at all it is just out of uh, uh, that particular scene um, and it looks beautiful it's a huge distraction you know how they say that billboards uh, on the side of the roads are a huge distraction for drivers mm-hmm. i think right. this this is one of the best distractions and then you probably should watch when you're driving because it can totally take your mind and eyes away from the road. Uh, it's that beautiful. 
and uh, thankfully we were not because in this whole trip in rajasthan as we speak uh, through in the next uh, uh, a few uh, minutes or uh, sessions uh, we probably will tell you that you know wherever you drive there is always some fort or the other on the left hand side or the right hand side you know mm-hmm. uh, it's it, it, there is a plethora of forts and then you probably will just be wondering looking into google maps and thinking what this is so okay. it, it was just that masterpiece that we witnessed and then immediately we had to take a left and we entered this town so i think ranjini can uh, take you through uh, what next but uh, yeah as yeah, far as I the mean, opening like scene Raghav was uh, rightly said it's, it didn't uh-huh. just look like hogwarts you know when you see hogwarts you also imagine that river right through right. to cross the right. river and then reach the castle and it's exactly the same here so there's this beautiful oh, lake wow. naval sagar lake and and once you sit there you can see the uh, palace or the fort right above it it's it's a beautiful uh, one of the best uh, places i have seen in india uh, yet So, oh my god okay yeah, it, it sounds magnificent thank you so much for uh, drawing out such a beautiful picture for the listeners and setting some context of this too um, but just in terms of the access and um, how to get here uh, could you also uh, draw out like the geographical orientation of where exactly this is yeah so uh, bundi is uh, close to kota very close to kota about mm-hmm. 30 kilometers from kota so usually people would uh, take a train go to kota and then you know head to bundi but thankfully because we were on a road trip we were uh, actually coming from uh, bharatpur we had gone to the bharatpur uh, bird sanctuary and we didn't want to go to say a jaipur or jodhpur because you can always fly into those towns right, right. so right. while thinking of which place to go i mean bundi is something i have read a lot about that's how we decided to go to bundi so it's about it's close to uh, kota and uh, close to udaipur and jaipur also it's it's exactly between udaipur and jaipur Mm-hmm. Yeah, just about uh, three hours away from Jaipur yes. is what I read. Yes. Uh, so yeah, in terms of access as well, it's uh, pretty accessible from uh, some of the other popular touristy places. If you'd like to uh, make it a part of your itinerary. Now, just in terms of the time of the year when you visited, and um, also for how long of an itinerary was this for you? So uh, we actually visited uh, mid February, but uh, I think okay. mid February tends to get. a little warm uh, uh mm-hmm. in all of rajasthan so the ideal time would be winters uh, something uh, late november to early feb would be the best uh but a lot of festivals happen so there's a bundi festival which happens uh late october november that's a time mm-hmm. when a lot of tourists come so that could also be a good time weather wise though we prefer uh, i think winter is best The other reason for this is, uh, in terms of accessibility itself, Bundi is not a very um, so it's not very motorable. So it's not like the usual place where you can take a cab or you can you know drive your vehicle. So while we were on a road trip, we had to like park our car for three days that we stayed uh, at a oh. point, and then we walked oh. most of uh, the places. We just walked, or of course you could take a auto. but uh, yeah to set the context bundi requires you to walk a lot which is probably why you don't see a lot of uh, indians uh, visiting this place uh, yeah okay. is it yeah. because of the narrow streets or narrow uh, why streets, do you say that of course narrow uh-huh. streets but also because uh, so bundi is uh, i mean again a picture that you can imagine so it's in between mountains it's like the center of a valley and uh, what happens because of that is there there are a lot of inclined lanes so it requires a lot of effort to even walk uh, normally in the town so so which is why i think a lot of uh, indians don't uh, come there because of this the other time of the year when i think bundi is most popular is immediately after monsoons uh mm-hmm. i think the place i mean we would like to go there uh, at that time because uh, strangely for a rajasthan place i think bundi has a lot of greenery after monsoon because of the mountains and it also has uh, waterfalls and all of those things so yeah okay. yeah yeah it's the aravalli ranges basically right yes correct uh, correct it's surrounded yeah. by uh, yeah and i was also very surprised by how green this was after the monsoons i was checking out a couple of vlogs yeah. and uh, <laughs> so keep those things in mind but yeah like transony mentioned winters might be the your best bet or um, even late october when the 
Bundi festival happens. Yeah, so um, we were checking out one blog and there was almost water to the guy's ankle when he was oh walking. Ah, and I was okay. telling Saif that, oh my God, that looks difficult. And he was like, you don't come. I'm going to go alone by myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, Saif is all ready to go alone. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, I mean, uh, uh, if you forget all of these things about Bundi, the moment we, uh, obviously because of the way it looks, the moment we entered Bundi, right? we actually wow. told ourselves that this is probably the most beautiful place we've ever been in india because oh, wow mm. okay yeah. one i mean there were very less tourists we, we reached in the afternoon yes. it was quite um, empty and the whole look of the palace and the empty streets and of course the paintings on the walls it was like a yeah. dream fairy fairy land sort of place the other point is yes lot many indians come in fact i spoke to a couple of my colleagues um a uh, one uh, whose in laws are stationed in ajmer uh, mm-hmm. and the other person who's actually got a family back in jodhpur who grew up there but he hasn't both of them haven't been to bundi uh, all they mm-hmm. have is just heard about it it happens right i mean uh, i have not yeah. visited some great places in tamil nadu as well but then yes bundi is definitely not the first choice for many so it makes it one more good reason to visit it jo absolutely thanks yeah, guys definitely. for setting the context yeah It's very popular amongst uh, a lot of the Israeli tourists also are here uh, Rati yeah, like I said yeah. a lot of foreign tourists and uh, a lot of us uh, I think we don't even know this uh, to Raga's point right maybe that's one of the yeah. reasons um, but yeah I think now that we have the geographical context and getting there etc said so I and what about the stay guys like is it easy to uh, book an accommodation online or how did you guys go about this Yeah so yeah i think it's pretty easy to book uh, an accommodation online uh, uh so all the pop i mean uh, i don't think we found a lot of airbnbs but uh, there are a lot of uh, havelis turned into hotels which you wow, would find okay. on the popular websites uh, for us of course uh, uh, finding an option was very easy because it so happened that we were the only tourists for the three days that we stayed in bundi and mm. although i had booked uh, a hotel through a very popular uh, website when i called the owner he actually didn't find uh, because probably he wasn't expecting anyone right but yeah i mean it was a great stay uh, we later learned that uh, that haveli was probably the best heritage stay in bundi and uh, yeah i mean we would totally recommend that you must stay at a haveli or a or a homestay because havelis have this i never knew this before uh, going to bundi every room is unique right in a heavy haveli yeah. and right. uh, i mean uh, you you just spoil for choices once you go in uh, and yeah so it was great yeah wonderful so thanks so much for uh, calling all of those things out and uh, just before we jump into the itinerary and explore a few places just uh, brief history about the place too i understand this was um, initially uh, i guess founded if i can use that word by the minas right there's a bunda mina after whom it's been named and eventually there was the kingdom of hadoti or hadoti chauhans uh, that came from the region so uh, a lot of the influences you will uh, definitely find in the place um, of the chauhans and uh, obviously uh, later on it was a princely state under the british for um, a few years finally before joining the indian union in 1949 so says wikipedia <laughs> but <laughs> just wanted to add a little bit of um, brief uh, historical information too uh, now in terms of the itinerary itself um, how do you want to take us around the place um, raghav and ranjini like where did you guys start off uh, want to share how your experience was exploring bundi Uh, yeah, so I think uh, we, w- with uh, three nights, I think it's uh, sort of uh, looks perfect in terms of the number of days. Uh, you know, you it always happens that once you get to a place and you start liking it, you end up immediately saying, oh, we're just staying for three nights, maybe we should uh, book one more. <laughs> uh, maybe one more wouldn't be all that bad, uh, uh, because we probably... uh would have headed out uh, uh to visit a few more uh, uh places nearby uh and probably explored a little bit more because it, it is it is a he- heaven for uh paradise for photographers uh if you yeah. like street okay. photography and so on and uh, you are always looking for the perfect light and uh, everything right so you, you, one more day wouldn't have been all that bad but um, yeah i think we reached by afternoon um uh, driving uh, from baratpur uh, that wasn't a difficult ride it was just about 5 hours 
and uh, as we just headed into our home stay we just uh, dropped our bags and uh, if this is the kind of thing that you see entering into a town you wouldn't want to take rest or just lie down <laughs> so we immediately changed clothes uh, freshened up and then headed out and then thankfully we spotted uh, a great place for uh, uh, chai and um, so i thought uh, that should be our very first spot and it was no ordinary spot uh, if ranjani can elaborate on it oh yeah i mean i mean uh, we of course spotted it randomly but then later huh. we realized that uh, so this is krishna ji's chai okay and apparently he makes the best chai in bundi but uh, we we would probably want to say that he probably makes the best tea in the world uh, because we ended <laughs> up having tea every day uh, thereafter and it's not like he just makes you know the, the usual one kind of tea every time we went he had a recommendation for us and uh, uh, you know uh, just before leaving he told me uh, you know i i'll not let you have the usual milk tea today because the heat is you know uh, up and your uh, your health is most important to me and he actually suggested a non milk pudina mint mint tea oh. Mm. okay i i feel certain that his tea probably kept me you know healthy because because we were on a very long road trip and eating out uh, so often and the temperature had suddenly you know changed in rajasthan but uh, his tea uh, probably kept us uh, fit throughout the <laughs> trip yeah i mean he has this uh, so he has this he takes out his stone there is a no- random stone that he's probably picked up from the river bank and he mm. starts crushing his special set of spices and he takes a good uh, 15 20 minutes to just make the chai and then he'll he'll give it to you he also actually showed us his scrapbook sort of uh, yeah. thing notebook where oh. he has these uh, photos Foreigners. and uh, memoirs written by a lot of foreign tourists that's when it struck me that you know it's now probably nobody is there and you know we we felt that oh this whole town is you know uh, undiscovered but it's not so i mean a lot of foreigners were coming and and it felt sad that they they probably miss them so much now and yeah uh, yeah, yeah so uh, like raghav said of course uh, it was just tea and just taking a walk that evening and then we you know uh, we just slept early that day but the next morning i think the first thing that anybody would want to do in bundi is to head out to the tara gar fort and the palace right uh mm-hmm. so it so so that's the thing so the fort probably opens at 8 am so 8 okay. is probably the ideal time to start because like i said uh while walking on the lanes itself is tiring walking uh on in the palace is very difficult because it's very steep and you have to you know there's no other help you have to just climb so the earlier you start the better because otherwise uh, you lose your energy so uh while what we did is we actually went into the palace first and because of that we really got tired uh, by the t- because it took almost 3 3 and a half 4 hours for us to just finish the palace by then uh, it was noon and we couldn't go to the fort uh but the fort itself is uh, so it's best if you have a guide with you but mm. uh, considering the time that we went and you know uh all the touristy stuff wasn't happening in bundi it was difficult to find a guide so going alone is not advisable because taragar fort is uh, quite abandoned and there's a lot of uh, it's hiking. it looks like a forest and there's a mm. lot of hiking involved so unless yeah. you have a guide it's a little difficult i wouldn't say you shouldn't go you should go if you head there first so uh, i mean we would recommend that you first visit the fort because it's uh, higher and it takes more energy for you to actually complete the fort and mm-hmm. then come to the gar mahal or the palace complex which has a lot more uh, stuff to see uh, so gar mahal of course is i mean it's divided into different complex and uh, the moment you enter you enter through this magnificent gate called the hathi pole mm-hmm. it's something like how you know buland darwaza in fatehpur sikri might look like yeah. and uh, while you know a lot of uh, locals might tell you that you cannot uh, take pictures and all that we actually uh, mm-hmm. there was one guard who turned out to be uh, a guide also and he actually then 
took us through the rooms and made the whole uh, visit worthwhile raga do you want to continue yeah yeah so uh, so yeah that that was really helpful because um, i mean we generally are either too afraid to break rules or we are just too ethical to follow the rules i don't know what you call it <laughs> but then once told uh, don't take pictures and then we we really did not want to uh, but then that that is how probably they have been instructed then we found this guy who was really helpful and if uh, you know if if i if i'm rama you know raghavan is my name so the guy who helps me obviously has to be hanuman right so this guy <laughs> the security guard was actually called hanuman uh, oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, so he he helped us a lot i mean he was he was i mean maybe it was because of lack of uh, tourists and lack of crowd uh, and he just was uh, just feeling lonely and wanting to interact with people i'm, I'm sure they have missed that too so he was uh, very welcoming he took us along uh, uh, taking us to you know certain segments which we wouldn't have discovered ourselves uh, because some parts of uh, the, the palace are a little you know uh, you know uh, set apart they are dark uh, you might be you know afraid of bats and so on but then i think with his help we got through those uh, places and then he took us to a couple of interesting um, uh, you know um, i think it's is the jula that uh, you should probably uh, talk about right which yeah so uh, i'll just touch upon all the uh, main places inside the palace so there's the chhatar mahal which is the main king's palace right where the king used mm-hmm. to stay and of course there's a diwane khas uh, kind of setup very close to uh, the palace uh so uh, after the chhatar mahal there's the phool mahal which is which was probably the queen's palace and once mm. you enter phool mahal that's when this whole uh, painting uh, thing starts uh, and bundi is very famous for the hadoti painting right so the walls are all adorned with uh, beautiful paintings uh, i think we were told that the paints itself come from uh, you know uh, crushed gems so yep. gemstones are crushed oh, wow. and that's how the uh, the paints come up so phool mahal uh, uh, the only sad part is a lot of these paintings are no longer you know maintained so well so uh, there are a few rooms which were inaccessible mm-hmm. of course the guide can let you see it upon request but otherwise they were closed and then there's the badal mahal which is uh, the um palace that the king built specially for his prince so mm-hmm. badal mahal has this very beautiful roof painting which actually explains uh, all the uh, rag the indian classical music rags in painting form and uh, and then there are all all these depictions of uh, daily life and all of those things so like raghav said the thing is that uh, the ghar palace and the taragar fort right they are maintained by different uh, authorities yeah. right mm. so the palace mm. is still maintained by the private family because of which uh, i think they're taking it slow and there are a lot of rooms that we were told have about you know 30 or 40 lakh uh, bats within them so they're still oh, still clearing God. them and uh, which is why i think you know it uh, i think within a couple of years uh these will be better maintained and the paintings and all of that might be restored but mm-hmm. within the ghar palace there is one particular section called the chitra shala which yeah. is maintained by asi uh mm-hmm. and that has more uh, uh, restored paintings and well maintained paintings so chitra shala will give you a full idea of what exactly the hadoti painting is chitra shala was also the room we were told where the king actually had his parties and meetings and all of those things mm-hmm. yeah and and of course there's an, i mean i uh, so when we find uh, 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 these places we often take inspiration from instagram and you know magazines and stuff so i had seen one picture on instagram of a very large jhula inside bundi palace and i couldn't find that at all even after the whole tour was over and then i went and showed our guide ki mujh, i i want to see this jhula right and then he took me through this cave sort of passage and then there we were right in uh, like a compound sort of place and there was this very huge swing so uh, mm-hmm. i had not seen anything like this uh, before in india it seems that the queen and her friends they would uh, actually play here and worship their gods here that's what this whole compound was meant for Uh, mm-hmm. and i'm glad that you know he took me there uh, that's when he told me that you know this place is still 
getting uh, cleaned up and you know maybe a couple of years down the line it will be a cleaner and better place to come yeah yeah definitely and uh, even by all you've been saying right uh, it seems like a complex of uh, all of these different palaces like many palaces within the overall big gad palace or the yeah. bundi palace like people usually refer to it as um and each one is so unique right like you said this uh, even from this jhula or the jhula chowk yeah. is what it's referred okay. to as right. to the hathi pole with those two elephants at the entrance and uh, the chatar palace or the uh, chitrashala uh, with those miniature paintings and uh, even within these paintings too like some of them are uh, like so different and unique um, i believe which one was this yeah the badal mahal the frescoes are uh, also like they have um, some asian or chinese correct, influences correct. too so right correct so it's inside uh, the badal mahal yes yeah yes. so that where it's all uh, painted in uh, like almost this oriental style that, that one was also very unique so this diversity was also <laughs> like quite surprising and uh, very fascinating to look at absolutely, right and absolutely. Uh, easily like you mentioned 3 4 hours is um, i think they'll just go by in a flash right okay. uh, given you're exploring all of these different things uh, so yeah i'm, I'm sure um, you enjoyed those and uh, it's definitely worth spending uh, like a good chunk of your time yeah i think half a day uh, would go just for the palace and the fort Yeah. Uh, yeah. of course if you have a guide uh, you might not take 3 hours uh, we were i mean we were the only two people in the palace that day it was a monday so on sundays usually bundi palace has a lot of local crowds also so a lot of students from kota come yeah. to the town mm-hmm. uh, to have so the, uh, so there are a lot of beautiful cafes like you mentioned saif uh, israeli mm-hmm. and and a lot of other foreign tourists come here so there are a lot of beautiful cafes here so locals do come here on the weekends to have food pizzas mainly mm, and yeah. uh, i mean we really enjoy so it was incidentally my birthday uh, the day we reached bundi so i really wanted to have a good dinner and i was very sad to know that a lot of cafes were closed because there were no foreigners anymore and even indian tourists there were hardly any but then i saw this place called the morgan place uh, i think it's mm-hmm. a very popular place in uh, goa uh, also in goa and dharamshala yeah and mm-hmm. uh, i was very happy that even their bundi uh, branch was very good the food was excellent and it's right under the palace so you have this bu- and it was a full moon night so you have mm. this wonderful view the, of the, the palace it's and the terrace uh, uh, that yeah, where you where you seated the birthday got special basically uh-huh. yeah <laughs> Yeah, picture happy. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh so yeah, this is basically uh, you could say uh, pretty much the whole day spent between the uh, Gad Palace and the Taragad Fort or was there other things you uh, did manage to squeeze in before before the dinner? Yeah, I think uh so we finished the palace in the f- uh, just the palace between 9 to 1. We were quite tired by then. and then we had lunch so that's another interesting story so we found this guy called jay who mm. stays just opposite the palace and he had actually warned us that there will be a lot of monkeys and you know you take this he'd given me a stick which was very useful for me to you know walk that mm. uh, inclined path so we told him he had offered uh, to make local uh, lunch at his place so we mm-hmm. had a beautiful uh, lunch at his home his sister and his mom basically they cook a very ba- very simple fare but rajasthani uh, food and uh, the hospitality that they had uh, they gave us was uh, amazing and and it's an experience to just enter uh, their traditional home and while the outside was so hot yeah their the homes are built also. using those old stones i think uh, sandstone It mm-hmm. was so cool inside, and uh, I mean, you get to learn a lot about their life and stories. So we ended up having uh, two lunches the next day. Also, I mean, that day mm-hmm. they made us uh, gatte ki sabzi and another sweet. I don't remember the name. Of the I sweet. don't remember. Yeah, gatte ki sabzi and then dal bati. Dal bati, yeah, sure. All yeah. of that. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> It was yeah. nice to experience that at a home and not a uh, you know right. restaurant yes. or a hotel. Perfect. So, yeah. Yeah, I think we have some of the common or popular uh, Rajasthani um, dishes. dishes too, also, right? Yeah, get yeah. a kisabzi and all. You might not 
get it as much uh, or you might not get it at all if you are yeah i think problem India. with some of these cities which uh, draw in a lot of foreign crowd is i think we have seen that even i go back to again another similar place called hampi uh, we i mean though you you really like uh, uh, eating all these uh, uh, you know extravagant food uh, but once in a while you want to go back to eating south indian which i mean i we both are <laughs> very used to and then we really could not find a single place serving south indian food in hampi uh so but thankfully i mean here too i think if you go to a restaurant it's it's all it's all continental it's all foreign yeah. food but at least a homestay like this somewhere you could at least get hold of uh, some rajasthani local food so that was nice true yeah. Yeah. so safe yeah. i mean mm-hmm. after lunch um, we still had a lot of time right so we mm-hmm. so jay actually recommended that we head to uh, this village called tikarda uh, mm. because uh, i mean Bundi is a small town, and you need maybe a day or two to actually see Bundi itself. So mm-hmm. we agreed, and uh, he took us to this small village called Tikarda. So what Tikarda is popular for is that it's it's a village where the entire community is of potters, mm-hmm. and they actually supply. So Rajasthan, of course, is a desert state and very hot, and and they depend a lot on these mud pots for their mm-hmm. uh, water storage and all that. So Tikarda is a village which actually supplies pots across the state for mm-hmm. the summers, and also I guess to neighboring states of uh, Madhya Pradesh and all that. So we, uh, while uh, not a lot of houses were allowing people to come in and you know watch, uh, you know we at least visited a couple of ho- couple of houses where they were you know very briskly working, uh, and we we just were sitting inside and watching this guy. who would uh, just take and start working on his pot and he probably completes what uh, 50 60 50 to 60 pots uh, in a day so oh, wow. we got to see how so they 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 take all the mud from the river and then there are a set of steps and and just watching this guy make the pot was so meditative i could just see that how much he enjoys uh, making the pot But interestingly, mm-hmm. he told us that you know he also plays cricket, and he had actually visited Bombay yeah, yeah. Uh, for a cricket match. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> so I mean, interesting story shared there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the entire process of making the one pot uh, was interesting, and we enjoyed that. And then, of course, uh, you must come back to the town uh, during sunset because the view of the palace at sunset is brilliant. So just yeah. you could just sit. on the banks of the naval sagar lake or you could hike up to this uh, chhatri which is called mordi ki chhatri uh, mm-hmm. but uh, like i said weather uh, if it's if it's peak winters it's probably pleasant to climb that place otherwise it's it's a difficult hike so you could just spend the evening watching the sunset um, uh, from the lake so uh, yeah that's how we ended that day Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. It uh, looks like a very eventful day, especially yeah. to start off with. Yeah. And uh, it's great that you had uh, like a sample of a uh, few different things, right? Uh, obviously, the popular palace, then the Boyd. pretty offbeat uh, pottery, almost like a pottery village, right? Yeah, yeah. Because the as well, so it's a good combination. Uh, now, what was in store for day two? So day two, uh, we wanted to start with food actually. So, uh, <laughs> so we had already heard of this very popular place where um, the pyaas ki kachori is very famous. And mm-hmm. uh, uh, but Raghav is a big poha fan. So he, everywhere he goes, he only wants poha. <laughs> so we were out in the market at around seven seven thirty. Yeah, yeah. And there was just this one uh, guy in a thela gadi sort of place having poha. and who would think that boondi would have one of the best pohas right and he starts mm. making poha at 6, 6 a.m. in the yeah. morning it seems oh wow uh, <laughs> yeah so we had poha and then we headed out to the kachori shop and uh, i mean believe me we had a uh, kachori in udaipur later but boondi's kachori was was the best uh, so <laughs> we we had the pyaas ki kachori and we also had the dal ki kachori and yeah. Uh, yeah and and then yeah so the main agenda for the day was so bundi is the city of step wells there are i think mm-hmm. 50 more than more. 55 um, yeah. i don't know say if you've read uh, more than that there are more oh, than 50 yeah, is what yeah, yeah more written, than yeah. 50 step wells but you hardly get to see any because a lot of step wells are just hidden in the lanes so jay of course also showed us a few uh, step wells which 
look like a house and then you just peek into it and you see that there's a step well there okay uh, but like i said because renovation and maintenance is disputed between asi and the private bodies uh, mm-hmm. a lot of step wells are still uh, you know closed or rather uh, getting renovated so the one step well that's worth visiting is the rani ji ki bauri which mm-hmm. is very beautiful i mean it's uh it's a huge uh, complex maintained by asi and uh, the the architecture itself is very beautiful and we saw that there is uh, the the shavatar of vishnu uh, carved inside and a lot of other carvings which are uh, magnificent uh, uh and then of course apart from that there are a couple of step wells in the market itself but sadly uh, i mean a lot of yeah, it's uh, more of a dump yeah, than a more uh, of a dump sad state uh, i hope that it gets better in the future uh, there's another step well called the daboji uh, ki bauri which is also mm-hmm. a good uh, good one because it's it's the typical square shaped huge step well with a lot of water stored and uh, it's maintained pretty well so, uh, so so we did the step wells and then we visited the sukhmahal Okay. So Sukh Mahal is is a small palace on the banks of another lake called the Jait Sagar Lake. Right. Now, uh, why Sukh Mahal is famous is because Rudyard Kipling, when he came to Bundi, he said that the moment you see Bundi Palace, you get reminded of you know the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, so he stayed in Sukh Mahal for two days, and that's that's where he wrote about Bundi. So that's what Didn't it's popular for. Didn't he also say that for. it was probably constructed by goblins? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's why it, yeah. it reminds us of uh, Hogwarts <laughs> also. So yeah. I think we could close that whole loop of story now. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's from yeah, 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 yeah. the work of goblins rather than men is apparently what he had said, yes. and uh, he penned his novel uh, called as Kim. Yes, correct. Yes. That yes. was the novel that he penned uh, while he was staying here. Yeah, yes. Kim was also shot here apparently in Sukh Mahal. Yep. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so sukhmel also has a museum yeah. uh, which is worth visiting so a lot of uh, archaeological finds and stuff are preserved here even the paintings a lot of uh, paintings are there here so uh, mm-hmm. i think it's closed on uh, fridays and uh, so near sukhmel there was there's also another place which we wanted to visit it's called the shar bag Yeah, which is mm-hmm. close. Sharbagh is like an entire uh, forest full of uh, cenotaphs. So uh, all the Rajput and the Rajasthan kings have a cenotaph built uh, in their memory when they die, right? So all the uh, the royal family, uh, anyone uh, from the royal family when they pass away, a chhatri is built uh, in their memory in Sharbagh. Mm-hmm. but shar bag again is under renovation currently so we couldn't see it uh, and it 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 looked a little dirty also but i have seen pictures in blogs and all of that say 10 years back when shar bag looked very beautiful i hope that that's uh, how it look in a couple of years i mean to understand what chhatris are and how they look there's one very beautiful chhatri which is like a single spot to visit uh, it's the mm-hmm. 84 pillared uh, cenotaph Sorry. and mm-hmm. uh, really i mean you must uh, must not skip this because one you get a, a view of the palace from here uh, like quite distant but quite distant get a, but get a very view. beautiful view mm-hmm. and the senate of itself has beautiful paintings on the roof and uh, the whole look i haven't seen a 84 pillared senate of uh, i mean before i've seen senate of all across rajasthan but this one is unique and a must visit for sure Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was commissioned by one Rao Anirudh, one of the rulers of the time, a Maharaja of uh, Bundi, and devoted to uh, his wet nurse Deva, I believe. Uh, and yeah, like you said, this is one of the more popular cenotaphs, right? Uh, along with Shar Bagh, which you can also, I mean, uh, right now it's closed, like you said, but um, definitely something to check out while in Bundi. The cenotaphs also, uh, like. provide you a uh, peek into the Rajasthani architecture right it's very unique you find them only in this part of the right. country um cool so having now made the stop at the 80, 84 pillared uh, cenotaph um what else were you looking at at this point uh, ranjani and raghav so uh, sef i think by now we had uh, seen 
uh, everything that was to actually see from a tourist perspective in Bundi. Uh, so I think we spent the rest of our time uh, just walking through the streets and you know uh, talking to people and uh, uh, Bundi is a lot about the people there, yeah. right? So apart yeah. from Jay, we we met. Uh, we met a painter. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> we met a painter. So miniature paintings is something that's very popular in Bundi, right? I mean, a lot of wall plates are famous these days on the Insta- on Instagram, but mm. they are actually made here, right? And and they're so cheap, and the artist spends like hours to make make it. So we actually chatted up with uh, an artist, and it was nice to see. He also has his, runs a school, uh, so that was interesting. And then and sari. and then there's the sari, right? The Kota Doria sari. Yeah. Uh, so I thought that Kota Doria is a sari which is probably very famous in Kota, and I would actually end up getting it in Bundi. But interestingly, uh, there's only one guy who weaves authentic Kota Doria still in Bundi, and mm. he he sits right across Krishna ji ki uh, chai, chai mm. shop. What he told me that is that uh, Kota Doria is actually uh, derivative Mysore. from Mysore. No, oh, really. <laughs> and now, sadly, there are very less weaving factories or none, and most of the uh, factories are probably in Calcutta. I mean, I mean, if you see a lot of these quota wearing people, they probably buy it more often in Calcutta and other places where the weaving still happens. So it's an art form which has probably died uh, 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 in these years. But yeah, I mean, I was a little sad to hear this uh, story. and uh, the markets of course so bundi market is like thriving in the evening one must go there to i mean even if you are not a photographer you should just go there there's this whole lane full of uh, bangles where you know i've never seen how uh, bang uh, the guy actually has these wooden stick sort of thing which he uses to size the bangles for a particular hand and mm. uh, there are a lot of so the road has local bangle sellers on one side and then there are these other fancy shops on one side uh then there there was this very curious uh, i had not seen it before so on the just on the road there are there are people who sell who who can make you know uh, dentures instantly and give it to you <laughs> okay it was very funny so first, yeah yeah and yeah. Uh, i actually went and just had a chat with the guy that you know how do you make it like i mean i mean how long does it take for you to make one and he said 15 to 20 minutes i can get it done mm-hmm. oh wow oh my god yeah, i mean <laughs> curious stuff that you can see only in a small town right uh yeah i mean i mean that's that and of course i mean something very very important about bundi is the paintings that you mm, see yeah. uh on the walls outside every house so the thing is that before uh, if there's a wedding happening in a house so they end up painting uh, fresh miniature paintings and other uh, sort of the hadoti painting outside their homes usually mm-hmm. they de- depict uh, elephants and horses and camels, camels and all yeah. of that but jay told us that uh, the reason why they do that is because uh, elephant uh, signifies for, uh... Uh, power yeah uh, horse <laughs> signifies luck and yeah. camel signifies love love all i mean three things that probably define a, a i mean a healthy marriage or family so mm. uh, that's something that was interesting so jay ended up taking us through a lot of homes and you could see old and new paintings yeah. and yeah that's what makes bundi colorful and beautiful uh, so yeah there, there is a lot of opportunity i mean if you are a photographer and if you love taking pictures uh, because you just will not know where to look uh, in every other street uh, you will see these wonderful paintings and it, it's the people who are welcoming right i mean i remember an instance uh, while taking a photograph uh, uh, this gate had a beautiful uh, painting uh, but the door of this guy's house was partially open and we were struggling to take a photograph and then the guy came out and he said will it help if we shut the door from inside uh, mm. I mean, how many people would do that, right? I mean, right. and it was his home, and we were standing outside his home, and he was allowing light to come in, but he still offered to close it so that uh, we could get a better picture. So, yeah, it's it's this nature that probably uh, makes you want to, you know, go back uh, and explore and you know spend more time there. 
so yeah photography uh, we actually wanted to keep two separate evenings uh, for it but then because there were so many things to do uh, we just did it on one evening uh, we walked around and uh, kept taking photographs so that's if if you if you've got a good uh, camera or if you love uh, taking pictures you should set apart some time for that too yeah yeah definitely these uh, miniature paintings are uh, another standout feature that you'll find yeah um uh, and uh, another thing i also came across was uh, apparently there's uh, some rock paintings these are uh, definitely you know the miniature paintings but these are uh, paintings from um, about 10000 years ago right uh, and uh, there is like a long stretch where you find a lot of these rock paintings so something perhaps uh, if if you have the time for it um, you can check that out also um, yeah you you might have heard of uh, places like bimbetka yeah we've been to bimbetka these... but right, yeah this right. one we haven't i think yeah, yeah we... so apparently yeah there is also um, some of the, these rock paintings in um, bundi as well so nice. if you have the time for it maybe uh, check the uh, these out too yeah i uh, even read up in some places that even mentioned that there were some tools from the stone age that yeah. were uh, discovered here wow. yeah. interesting yeah so those uh, all of those things are there in the museum, museum. the stone age uh, instruments and all of that but uh, yeah we never knew of this uh, rock painting uh, uh, place yeah yeah even i don't have the specifics but apparently uh, there is a few in the in the region that one can check out so some research will um, give you a little <laughs> also more also an leads. opportunity to go back i <laughs> guess uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 definitely um a couple other things in the vicinity as well uh, i don't know if you'd like to call out ranjani um one of them was the garodia mahadev yeah, right yeah. you want to speak about that yeah too? so uh, so this is what happens right when you when you go out uh, visiting places and you openly go and talk to people uh you can always be happy not speaking with anyone and enjoy your own company but then you'll end up missing out on a lot of good stuff but then we 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 had this uh, small uh, three member family also in in the palace uh, in the gar palace uh, on that day that we were visiting they came in a little later after we did and uh, you know they were just talking because they also found us uh, interesting to talk to we suddenly got, got to speaking Uh, exchanging names and so on and they recommended uh, a place uh, and that was the garodia mahadev um, you mm-hmm. know a temple they and actually sh- opened their phones showed yeah. us the place and yeah. they were like you have to go here and the moment we saw the pictures yeah. we were like we have to make time and yeah and i i quickly uh, you know recollected uh, remember i think 3 4 years ago or even before that rajasthan tourism had a huge uh, you know um, ad making um you know they were they were there was a fleet of ad ads coming out of the Rajasthan tourism board uh, and they were all well made and then they portrayed these amazing places uh, i i'm sure you will remember the song also if you go to youtube and watch these videos and it struck me that i've seen this uh, the moment this guy showed it on his mobile camera uh, i just forgot about it and uh, and rightly so i mean you could probably a uh, call it india's own uh, grand canyon um, mm-hmm. so it it was just about 30 35 kilometers from uh, bundi and uh, it was not too much of a detour we were anyway heading towards uh, udaipur and it was just on the way uh, so we thought we should visit this we we wanted to make sure uh, we get up in the morning and head out there uh, you could probably go in the morning or in the evening i think it wouldn't make too much of a difference uh, because this whole structure this massive mountain in the middle uh, with the chambal river in between uh, you know it, it's got a 360 degree view right so you you can go at any time of the day and get good pictures but the moment we reach there i mean you you have to pay a, a certain amount and the access road doesn't give you any idea that this is what you're going to head into and you're always in doubt uh, whether we have come to the correct place and then finally when you come there uh, you just park your vehicle and then you just walk a few steps and then you are at the edge of the mountain and then all you see is the chambal river flowing and then in the middle there is a huge rock so you can't you can't reach that rock but that is what gives you the view the rock in the middle and uh, the river around and it just feels like the grand canyon uh, completely i uh, people do refer to gandikota in andhra pradesh uh, mm-hmm. as the other one i think it's been shot in a couple of uh, south indian movies uh, but then this i think is probably a close second and uh, you are left speechless and you want to take as many pictures as you can and uh, you know enjoy uh, 
this excellent view um yeah so of course there's a temple also there and uh, this itself is is like i said it's a forest uh, area uh, so it's a beautiful you can spend a lot of time here i mean it's quiet and apparently you can spot panthers yeah uh, mm-hmm. if you are lucky or unlucky i don't know <laughs> but uh, yeah i mean we actually i i remember we 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 were very happy there we had reached right in time for breakfast we were just sitting and having breakfast and i suddenly felt this hand on my thigh and i just look around and there there's a monkey not a panther <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean you've got to be a little careful uh, thankfully these monkeys are wild so they they didn't come attack us or snatch the food or anything like that uh, but yeah i mean this is a must visit it's very close to kota it could be a little far if you're just staying in bundi but uh, 30 kilometers is nothing so yeah yeah definitely uh almost like the cherry on top of the cake right uh, if if you haven't had enough of uh, variety and diversity in bundi there's <laughs> definitely this uh, garuda mahadev um the canyon if if i could say so uh, to visit and add to it uh, there's also the ramgarh vishdhari wildlife sanctuary that's not Correct. too far away from bundi uh, so that's another thing again like i said if you want to extend this beyond the two three days you can always add these um, other things in the vicinity and make this a longer itinerary um, but overall uh, Ra- ranjini and raghav uh, thank you so much it just uh, like what you said at the beginning it almost feels like that fairy tale town very yeah. quaint yep. uh, has a variety of uh, things to offer right from these forts to beautiful palaces to miniature paintings to nature. step wells lakes yeah. <laughs> i think i can waterfalls, go on but we actually miss yeah. the waterfalls i've seen the pictures and i i really want uh-huh. to go back just for the waterfalls <laughs> there's more than one reason for you to go back as we've discovered even just from this conversation and i'm sure there's um, many more that we haven't covered and if nothing uh, you can always go back for the kachodis right the pyaas yeah, kachodi and dal ki kachodi absolutely absolutely yes yeah a lot of these things um, any final call outs ranjini raghav uh, in terms of bundi or um, just in terms of uh, even calling out how one can uh, follow your travels follow your um, work through social media or the blog uh, do you want to call those things out please Of course of course so if if you liked what you heard please do check out our instagram page rara rasta r a r a r w a s t a a lot of india travel is what you'll find there yeah that's about it but self there's something else that came to my mind when we were chatting up bundi is the city of steppers and you were mentioning about how you know the sad state of steppers and all of that right Interestingly just before going for this road trip I was listening to a podcast uh, about mm-hmm. Stepwells and and it's so strange Stepwells is a concept which uh, is very unique to India and somehow it's not been copied by any other country and like you know Stepwells were a mode of you know conservation right water conservation mm-hmm. and i wonder why can't we actually go back and start using these stepwells and a lot of our water problems are going to sort right if we just do right. that so we also uh, got the chance to actually visit chand uh, bauri which is india's biggest stepwell again in rajasthan uh, but yeah i mean these are all just uh, uh, tourist monuments or you know archaeological sites now and no longer in use but i'm sure that if you know uh, people are listening uh, conservation steps could be done and a lot of small lesser known steps can be maintained by the communities and households themselves so in bundi we heard that a lot of small small bauris are maintained by individual families and are still in use so something like that i think step wells if we get to know how to use them a lot of our water uh, problems will get sorted Yeah, yeah no i think that's a yeah, brilliant idea very valid thought yeah. too and uh, hopefully we can explore some of those opportunities uh, but yeah it's been brilliant chatting with uh, the both of you all this while and again thank you for taking us to this lovely quaint little town of uh, bundi and i'm glad faiza could also <laughs> yeah. come and <laughs> chat with you yeah we glad you too Yeah. and we'll add links to your po- I mean to your Instagram page in the show notes section so thank you so much it was a fun journey and thanks a lot thank you thanks Faiza thanks Seth
That was yet another great episode on the Musafir Stories. Make sure to show us some love by sharing the podcast with your friends and family. We are on Instagram and Twitter at Musafir Stories. If you like this podcast, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can listen to us on the IVM podcast app or the website. Follow us on our social media. We are at IVM Podcasts on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you.